Hey guys, this is John here in Los Angeles with the Alpha Channel Update for Friday, November 1st, 2024. And today is the last Yggdrasil card deck by Hakur Halderson. It's a beautiful deck. Uh, these are very detailed cards. This is all done by pen. No brushwork. This is Irman, Reconciliation of Opposites. And today we are doing King Conan number one. Oops. And when it comes to reconciliation of opposites, this is a, this is a good one to do. So this on the cover is Tothamon. This is not Vomitar next to him, but this is another uh, witch, Hyperborean witch, who runs the Witchmen. Those same like black stocking guys with the white faces and the electrocution rods. And they kidnap his son, Khan. Conan, but they call him Khan, like Connor. This is a great cover page, splash page, by John Buscema. And this is basically a, um, excuse me. <clears throat> this is, this splash page is a montage, like a flashback montage. Look at everything in the background. The, the horizon, like under Conan's legs, I think there's a burning city. This is a great one page of work. This would be a black and white one to hang on the wall. This would be a poster. Got my finger in the way. Sorry for that. This is a giant size book too. It's, it's glued. It's not stapled. I don't think there's staples in here at all. It's just glue, which is kind of cool. And uh, this is Tothamon up here. This is a great comic. This is a really good comic. I didn't get into it at first. In part, the flashbacks were a little were a lot. Although we did just read the annual with Zenobia. So this seems to pick up right where those annuals leave off. Khan's a little bit older. And uh Yeah, this is it's really good. This is John Bissema and Roy Thomas. Look at this art. There's a few flashbacks in this book, but I don't think Cronin throws a sword. He does get captured, uh, but you'll see what happens. So this is Conan and his men-at-arms. I think this guy's name is Prospero. And they're out on a hunt. They're hunting a, wild, a white stag. And Khan, Conan's son, has gone missing. He split off from the group and he hasn't come back to camp. And on one hand, Conan is like, he'll be a fine, it's only the forest. And then as the night wears on and he doesn't come back, and then a white owl flies through, Conan's like, you know what? No, he's too far away. This is, there's, this is not right. <clears throat> and so he gets the guys to saddle up and they go out looking for now, this is actually Khan himself chasing the white stag. And the white stag, it turns out, a couple pages later, is a magical deception, an illusion, and is actually a witch woman <clears throat> who takes Khan hostage with her witch men, who are these guys in white with the black body stockings. Which, I mean, which... Uh, they could have done a better costume job, more in the time. And here, uh, Khan gets one of them in the throat, kills one out at the bottom. And this is kind of interesting, too. Um, the Hyperboreans are super tall. Look at this. Is that Custer's Last Stand? What is that? Revolutionary, Revolutionary War. This is an ad for a little kid. This one is an ad for a kid. Why is that such a hard thing to do? Why not put ads in a kid's comic for kids? So Khan is knocked unconscious with one of their taser weapons. And he's taken hostage by the Witch Queen, who is uh, 
I'm guessing an ancestor of Vamatar because Conan has already put Vamatar down before an ancestor, a descendant, an old lady descendant of Vamatar. She might be the next in line. The crone and Vamatar was the the matron or the maiden. Um, it's a weird name, Vamatar. Yamatar would have been better if they spelled it with a Y. Now, it sounds like you're saying vomit all the time. Conan finds the evidence that his son killed one of the witchmen of Hyperborea, and now he knows what he's dealing with. His son has been kidnapped. If they were going to hold him for ransom, they would have contacted him. They do leave a message. How do they see get the message? I'm trying to remember. A javelin or an arrow is set on the path that says Conan alone must proceed and follow the route designated by uh, the symbol of the white hand. <clears throat> so the witch men want Conan to come alone, and if he brings his army, his son will be killed. That's what the note says. And Conan, of course, goes. And this is a quite a bit of traveling, two pages of traveling. This is a king-sized book. They could have done this in four panels, two panels. They could have done this in two panels. There's a lot of things in this book they could have done in a lot less panels, and we get treated, we get treated to this. There's a scene in Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid where Pat Garrett is out riding, and I think it's right after he leaves Billy or leaves one of the other places that he visits. It's right after he accepts the money to hunt Billy from Governor Lou Wallace and the Santa Fe Ring. And as he rides away, he goes past some water set against the hillside. And the sun is, I guess it doesn't really matter where the sun is, but the light reflects his reflection onto the water against the horizon. But you can't see him because of where the hill is. And it's a beautiful shot. And it's kind of like what we get here. I was saying the other day, screenwriting and comic book writing are very similar, and the illustrator is the director. The illustrator is the director. He's choosing the angles, he's choosing the composition, he's choosing the focus. But in this case, he's creating it. He's not dressing it up. Here, Conan gets attacked by zombie beast men who live out on the uh, moors. This is essentially the Moors. He's basically going north to Hyperborea, um, basic, like super far north Scotland. Imagine if Scotland like continued way out and it wasn't just an island or the north part of an island, or the north peninsula of an island. And he has to fight them and they kick his ass. And meanwhile, Khan arrives at the castle, the Hyperborean castle, a ruined castle because they are, the Hyperboreans are basically like the Melnibonaeans if they were still alive. And if Elric existed in the Conan realm, he would be a Hyperborean. Although the Hyperboreans' culture is a little bit different than the Melnibonaeans, the Melnibonaeans were more refined and more evil, and their culture declines at a much faster clip than the Hyperboreans. The Hyperboreans seem to last a lot longer. They're still around when, like, their commute, their really their their culture, their Everything is, they should be dead. They shouldn't be able to survive as long as they do. And here they are. They've got Khan. Um, they chain him up. What else did they do to him? Oh, <clears throat> this is interesting. So Khan, and I was I wanted to mention this earlier. The Hyperboreans are super tall. And they let Khan ride his horse, which is interesting. They don't drag him along because walking, he would take way too long. The horse is much faster for their long legs. And they don't want to carry him either. They're not especially strong, they're just tall. And here, look at this guy in the center. <clears throat> here the witch queen is performing a sacrifice to do some magic. Look at this guy in the center. John Buscema and Roy Thomas, I think they knew what they were about. This was published in 1980. Star Trek the movie was coming out. I believe they had to know they were surrounded by Jews and that they're being run by Jews and that their culture is be at war. Is it in a magical war? Media is magic. And our culture has been in a magical war with Jews for thousands of years. And that's what this comic is about. And wait till I show you how. 
Look at this guy here in the center. He gets sacrificed to this witch queen, this Harborborean witch queen, held upside down over the fire. His blood is dripped into the fire and she reads the smoke. It's pretty evil. The Northern tribes were capable of some evil magic. Khan <clears throat> watches all this and the magic she performs is the summoning of Toth Amon. Now, Thulsa Doom was a skull-headed wizard. He wasn't a black guy. Although a black guy could be a skull-headed. They're not wizards, but they're definitely savages. Um, they're far from wizards. Although there's a shaman in here, <clears throat> which is interesting. Toth Amon and the Witch Queen are plotting a, an attack on the Western Kingdoms. In this, they have like this League of Magicians. <clears throat> Wait till you see this. This is the Kalergi plan. This is the invasion of white countries with savage blacks run by Jews. Now here Conan wakes up after being knocked out and his fight with the beastmen. And they've taken everything except his loincloth and boots. So his armor, his sword, his helmet. <clears throat> We're back to naked Conan. Which is most of the book. Because it's easier to draw. I prefer seeing him fight in armor and shit. I, like, I would prefer to see the medieval King Arthur version of Conan the Barbarian. Epic, but that's just me. Spartacus. Look at this Iron Man ad. See, this is an ad. This is an ad for a kid. For what is this, Hostess? They had these in every comic from 1970 to 1980. It was a smart move. There was a Hostess shop in my town where I grew up. Conan finds... Uh, a giant mammoth skull at a pass between two mountains, the only way he can get into Hyperborea, and then past the pass, past the, the skull, which has some bullshit written on it. I don't remember what it said. And he finally, uh, does he get to the castle yet? <clears throat> what is this? Oh! Yeah, this is where he sees the castle, right up here. John Buscema wastes no time, and doesn't even get a big panel. You already got the big panels of the castle. When he gets inside, the witch, queen, the witch queen is waiting, or another witch queen, is waiting at the door and tells him where to go to find his son. And actually, no, it is her, because Conan talks shit to her, and she uh, talks some smack back, asks him some questions, and eventually tells her witch men to take him to his son, which they do. And he's at the bottom of a well. They give him a rope. Conan goes down, finds his son, but they pull the rope back up after him. At first, at the end of this page, I was like, really? Did they just not even take him to his son and just put him in a well? And, and now he has to, he's down there by himself. But Khan's there and they're reunited and they have to wait down there until the Magicians, the, the League of Doom is ready for them. The Legion of Doom. <clears throat> John Bassem is really good at drawing Conan sitting anywhere and making it not look bad. That's not an easy thing to do. Once you start trying to draw comics, you will learn that drawing characters sitting down or embracing is some of the hardest art you will have to do. And he is able to draw Conan, he does it in a loincloth, sitting down and not make it, not make it repulsive. He's just a normal guy sitting down. It doesn't look weird, it doesn't look stupid. That's not an easy thing to do. So here they, uh, <clears throat> the legion of, of wizards assemble down here. We have a Chinese, Tothamon, a black, a black, uh, Shaman and the Witch Queen. And basically, look at what we have going on today. Jews have so enraged the world against America that you have Putin, Mao, not Mao, Xi of China, um, Brazil, and Africa doesn't, Africa's never really become a working, they don't really have a working nation, do they? Yeah, well, anyhow. Um, they certainly are invading. Uh, here, Conan, they have some back and forth. These people are introduced. 
this guy, the Chinese, basically Xi says you killed Mao and I got my spot because of that. Conan killed some other wizard in Kitan. Uh, I don't remember what his name was, but that's how this guy got his seat because that other guy was dead because of Conan. And of course, Tothamon. Conan hates Tothamon. How does this go? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good. So, <clears throat> Tothamon wants to kill Conan outright, but the Witch Queen says, no, I want to mess with him first. I, as, like a cat, like an old cat lady, she wants to play with her food. And she sends her High Reborians out to beat Conan up. And Conan's so, excuse me, you got the hiccups a little bit. Conan's son has told him how the stun rods work. Not that it isn't acutely obvious or incredibly obvious. No one says acutely, that's a weird word. Writers use weird words. And when I'm just doing stream of consciousness talking, I don't have time to edit myself, so. Um, anyhow, Conan gets in, Conan manhandles this Hyperborean and throws him into the brazier, the brazier, the fire thing that is up on the dais in front of all the magicians and he spills this oil fire out over all of them. Like, uh, this is so easy. This is so easy. They didn't have to have the fire all loose like that. The fight continues. Chairs become weapons. This is a, basically a Friday night at the Waffle House in the hood, and uh, Khan gets into it and fights back against the Hyperborean Witchmen while Conan is, I think Conan gets taken, fights the Witchmen while Khan ends up, yeah, Conan fights the Witchmen for a while, and when there's a break in the action, he grabs a chair and hurls it at Tothamon and jumps over the fire at him. He's afraid that the old lady is going to get up and do something, but she has been burned to death. They show her hand sticking up. Yeah, this is Conan looking back. The very last panel is him worried that the old lady is going to get up behind him, but she ain't getting up. So no one plunged his sword into her. She got kind of killed by accident, which is, you know, when you're going to kill women, you have to do it carefully as a writer because it's not the character killing them. The audience, yeah, it's the character killing them, but it's also you. The same way they hold Arnold Schwarzenegger accountable for when he talks smack about knocking Christina Lawkins' head through a toilet. So they, yeah, I remember he ran for governor and they were like, that. they used that in all their ads against him. You know who I thought the other day would have been a great Conan? It was Adam Baldwin, not one of the Baldwin brothers, Adam Baldwin from Full Metal Jacket, who played Animal Mother. If you could have got him into the gym and grow his hair out and get him to speak with an accent, a European accent, and get him to do it well, he could have been a magnificent Conan. Not that Arnold was bad. Arnold was a good Conan for this multiverse. Uh, here the fighting continues. <clears throat> Khan is doing pretty good. Uh, the the African shaman, so Tothamon disappears in, a, in some green smoke, which I think happens back a page. Yeah, Tothamon runs away from Conan. Then Conan looks back and sees the old lady is dead. Then Tothamon presumably rescues the African shaman because it's the same green smoke. And the African shaman probably can't teleport because, you know, you know why. Um, Conan, however, the Chinese uh, wizard who has been burned by the fire and knocked off his chair is pissed. And it's not a female. It looked like it, but it's not. He's mad and he uh, has given Conan what for. He is blasting Conan with some magical power. First Conan feels pain, then he's, he's frozen, and then he can't breathe. He's starting to strength, he's starting to um, choke to death. And who gets the, oh, check this out. So this is where John Basema's last two pages start to have a ton of panels. The old man gets struck by an arrow, which is good. It's not the last panel, but Conan's now free. Uh, Conan is, it can breathe again and can move. And that's the last panel. 
But look at how small the panels are getting. And look at that, I, the, the story, we're getting close to the end. We've only got so many pages. The last page in pure, true John Buscema fashion has six panels, at least six, you know, not nine, thank God. But that's a lot of panels for the last page. But everything gets explained. Conan gets rescued by his army who followed him at a distance. Whoops. Khan is okay. And uh, Conan is proud of him for how he did in the fight. And that's it. If this isn't a premonition of the Kalergi plan by Thomas and Busema, that foreign wizards are plotting against the Western kingdoms. They literally say the Western kingdoms, not just at Colonia, but the Western kingdoms. And we are living it today. Look at England and Ireland. And there's going to be a crusade and a race war because they can't maintain this. They can't maintain it. So it's going to get insane pretty quick. Um, this is our last Yggdrasil deck. And this is going to probably get posted late today. Legacy brought to you by Legacy of the Mad Scientist, Legend of Ashley Fox. 26 hours of amazing audiobooks or uh, regular novels for you guys to check out. We also have a comic book PDF here in the description. Ashley Fox Ninja Babysitter. Number six, The Last Valkyrie. Uh, issues 0 through 5 have not been drawn yet. Started with the end. Uh, so, yeah, Conan the Barbarian. We'll do some more tomorrow. See you guys.